Welcome to Quick Shots, a short format traditional archery podcast where we introduce you to some of the world's most influential traditional archers and occasionally some random dudes. Check out CD Archery Performance ILF Risers for hunters to world champions. CDArchery.com, made right here in the United States of America. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, ArcheryPass.com, for all your traditional archery needs. How are you shooting? Yes. <laughs> Don't shoot the tab, obviously. Hey everyone, welcome back to Quick Shots. I'm your host, Mick Chambers. I'm here with Michael Davenport. Hey, Michael, how are you doing? I'm good, man. How are you? <laughs> really good, dude. I'm glad to get you on the show. Uh, this is amazing because um, I we keep passing each other by, and you know a lot of guys I know, and but this is actually the first time, well, second time, sorry, you just reminded me. We talked for a little bit at the first single string boot camp. Um, and uh, yeah, but I've been wanting to get you on because you shoot with everyone I know. You've got a great, you know, you, you're a hunter, you're a um you're a cat dad you're a you know. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah big time i'm more like uh i'm more like the keeper of, of all animals my wife is the crazy cat lady and i just happen to be married to her and unfortunately unfortunately i'm stuck with those cats so and, you know, and uh, yeah, yeah one of the other great things too about that the reason i want to talk to you is we're both martial artists you're yes. you'll, you would kick my ass uh, terribly but i you know no man that's why, I never, I that's why we in the same room together because i know that you're good enough. <laughs> way too much testosterone two alpha males a striker and a grappler it would just be like the you know mma world would be shocked to see us us old guys roll around and try to kill each other so i'm a i'm a i'm a grappler i grapple a lot i i ended up uh coming back from so really quick story i ended up coming back from japan i studied over in japan for a year and a half <clears throat> when i came home I went to Torrance, California, uh, to train uh, and teach this other guy. You know, he, here's what's going on in Japan. You know, uh, with Aikido, and then he said, "Hey, have you ever tried Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu?" I said, "No." He goes, "Let's do it." And then he took me around, and there was uh, uh, he was one of the first Gracie brown belts. Okay. And so I ended up I went out there for like go. I went out to go for like a week. I ended up staying like six months. Oh uh, wow! Just, now just, at Torrance at the Gracie Academy. No, this is a this was a different school. Um, this okay. was this guy's own school. Okay, uh, but he did take me to the Machado Brothers um, studio, and yeah, uh, that was an interesting story too. I don't want to get too much. This is about you, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so hey, so so yeah, we're both we're both uh, we both uh, uh, love to get into martial arts, and you know, I, there's you you have that great philosophy too. I follow you a little bit. I stalk you a little bit on Facebook. Um, so yeah, I, I really wanted to get this interview going with you. So I'm happy you're here, sure. but let's talk about you. What is your, uh, how did you get into traditional archery? You know, um, hunting to me has always been something I was just obsessed with from, a, from the time I was a little kid. And, uh, my situation at home was a little weird. Like my grandparents lived, uh, in the country, but I lived in like the projects in the hood, single mom, three kids, just. I was obsessed with being outdoors. It was my safe place. I could go and be in, be in the woods and be 100% comfortable from an early age. And so it kind of, I would go away on the weekends and be at my grandparents and rabbit hunt and squirrel hunt. But in West Tennessee, where I grew up, we just didn't have whitetails at that time. So it was just, that was basically it. Um, my mom being a single mom, it was just really difficult for her to provide me with opportunities and with two other kids at home, it was just pretty tough. But we actually moved from like the projects to a nicer neighborhood when I was 11 or 12 and uh, still obsessed with all things hunting. And the neighborhood kid, the good friend of mine, his dad hunted, he knew that I uh, just loved it and they invited me on a youth hunt. I think I was 11 or 12. I uh, went whitetail hunting for the first time, and after that, it was the lid was blown off. Like I was a full time uh, fanatic. Um, at 16, I, I didn't have a bow yet, and that was in '86. That's how old I am. I'm an old guy. Um, they they basically <clears throat> um, 
these pawn shops were just giving these recurves away, like, because everyone's getting compounds and they were taking their recurves in and getting what they could out of them. So I think I mowed yards for one summer and got enough money to buy a Ben Pearson recurve at 16 and uh, didn't know anything, no internet yet, you know, no even traditional bow hunter magazine. It didn't start until 89. So it was very much just, I checked out a couple of books in the library and tried to figure it out. Right. And, uh, it became uh, something I became obsessed with. And at 16, I killed my first whitetail with a recurve. And uh, after that, again, um, got to college. I played ball in college for a little bit. And uh, same thing. I, I, I did eventually start hunting with a compound and did that all through college. But um, once, I, once I decided I wanted to make things harder and I wanted more of a challenge, um, I started looking into it and uh, jumped right in hunting with a recurve, I think in 2001 and uh, really haven't looked back. I, I, I mean, I love all weapon systems, but at the same time, hunting with a recurve or hunting with a longbow has just been just something I enjoy because it's difficult and it gets you closer to the animal, which I want to be at all times. That's great. So where do you predominantly hunt in? Like what, what do you, what do you hunt? Where do you hunt? Tell us a little so, bit about your hunting history. Yeah, so um, I nearly flunked out of college, uh, Murray State University. I went to uh, I went there after playing JUCO ball. Um, I got to Murray, and uh, there's a place called Land Between the Lakes, which is 64 miles of just wilderness, and it's within 35 minutes of the college. So I hunted a lot of white, mainly whitetails for me. It's it's been a passion of mine. Now I've hunted. I killed a um, you know killed a mountain goat with a longbow. I have killed elk and you know, other stuff, but mainly whitetails. So I cut my teeth really just um, hunting whitetails in Kentucky um, after I finished college and, and uh, you know, found other places to hunt and actually married a, a Southern Illinois girl and she drugged me back here. So we, uh, we've been here now for about, oh, about 17, 18 years. And uh, you know, so mainly whitetails, mainly mature whitetails. I'm, I'm, I'm really, uh, my whole goal every year is to put my tag around a mature whitetail buck and that's that's a driving force for and that's really a driving force for competition as much as i compete it's all about the moment of truth and and you know stress inoculation yep. making that shot when a big whitetail walks in yeah that's a that's pretty amazing i I don't think I, I haven't had a shot on a big uh, white tail yet. So like, I mean, lots of does and stuff like that, but, right. but yeah, you, you know, tell us a little bit about your, so yes, you're a hunter and, and cover that. And that's really amazing. Um, but, and I saw bear pictures too. So there's bear, oh, yeah. elk, there's a white tail. You love white tail. Um, but you're also a competitive archer. Yes. And, and a, and a really good competitive archer. So um, why don't you tell us a little bit about your competitive history? Yeah, I mean, I just, I started competing uh, just a few years ago, really. I mean, I've shot a, a recurve for quite some time or a longbow, uh, a trad bow, you know. Uh, I think it was trad worlds in 2018. Um, I'd never shot a tournament, like literally I'd never shot a tournament. I showed up there and I was in second place after the first day. Wow. Um, and it was just like, oh, this is actually fun to compete, you know. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, uh, I have a little bit of a chronic illness and it plagued me that night. So the next day, I actually tapped out and did not get to shoot the next day. Oh, sure. um, it's pretty horrible. But that lit a fire for competition because I, uh, I looked at it as a way to uh, it's just another part of, of hunting. It's it's especially 3D. That's probably my favorite, even though I've shot indoors and won a few titles indoors, um, you know, state stuff. And I shot Lancaster. That's been a lot of fun. Um, I, I live right, you know, an hour from Jeff Ogilvy. So every time I have to shoot in an indoor tournament, oh, I no. break my clock. So <laughs> yeah, no. I'm just waiting to give him his first jiu-jitsu lesson. And the first one's going to be free. It's going to be on me, you know, but know. Jeff's a, Jeff's a, he's, he's always there. He's always yep. there. He's, yeah, and, and he's just, his demeanor. If you look at, I'm sure we'll talk a little bit about uh, martial arts, but the demeanor that Jeff has is just so calm and collected yeah. and he doesn't get rattled and if you could jar that and, and serve it someplace you could i mean for us competitive archers where nerves sometimes play a role yeah. um i think you know that is uh, he's kind of got the formula for keeping himself 
nice, calm, cool, collected. Doesn't get too high, doesn't get too low. Uh, and I think that's important. Shooting competitively, I shoot a lot of ASA. So in our, in our class, like Matt Hudson will be here next week. He's gonna stay with me for a few days. Yeah. And that uh, bare bow class at ASA has been a lot of so, fun. I just pause for a second. Matt Hudson yeah. won Lancaster this year. Yeah. Uh, and he came in, I think, second in Vegas, just for people yeah. who may not know. Yeah, and he, he's, a, he's a great guy and a great shooter. But we've, we've shot against each other now for a couple of years. I jumped in from the trad side. I had a really good trad year in 21. I think I, I uh, there were six ASA pro-ams. I made all six podiums, and I won three of them. So it was a really good good year for me that's when i started figuring it out a little more you know um and i was managing some tp right-handed I, I was a right-handed shooter then now i'm a left-handed shooter so i switched this year um and just competing in itself is just a lot of fun it it, it um i use it um i want to make sure that i've felt my nerves and been able to manage them uh so that again whenever i have an opportunity at a an animal that walks in, I've at least felt my heart rate at max heart rate and my respirations at 40 and my, you know, everything else going on with your sympathetic nervous system when a big giant whitetail walks in, you know, and I think, I really do think that uh, competition helps that a great deal. You just said a bunch of things that I need to, I need to go back on. Okay, and sure, yeah. The, 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 the least of which is, yeah, yeah, I just, you know, I went from right-handed to left-handed because I had a target panic on right-handed. And I yeah. noticed you were shooting left-hand. I thought I saw some right and left switch there. So yeah. how, how, how? Well, you I'm know, gonna... to, to be very honest, I have a, a bit of a shoulder problem with my right side. And it was the craziest thing. It became its own clicker. So I would draw the bow right-handed, anchor, come to transfer to hold and start pulling through and that shoulder would click and I swear it would make me shoot the bow. <laughs> and then it developed this crazy kind of, um, you know, that's where the TP came from because then I knew the shoulder was going to pop. So I would be try to, I would try to shoot the bow before it popped and it just yeah. became a mess. So um, the fortunate thing for me is I am left eye dominant. I was, cro I was cross handed. So um, the other thing is I fought uh, back, before when I was a uh, uh, training Muay Thai, I did a lot of Muay Thai and I fought Southpaw a lot. So uh, my power leg is my left leg and, and with archery, everything starts from the ground. And mm -hmm. so when I switched to left handed, it really just became a matter of I had the right, uh, I had the left eye dominant and I had the you know left leg being my strong leg. And it just became a mechanical building the shot. And what I did do um, is I built my shot again better than before because i had a bunch of bad habits before and i basically was self-taught and being left-handed i got some instruction i i worked on um just the basics first before i did any kind of trying to get accurate you know and so uh, man it, it really has paid off and i would say at this point i started in october i'm a better shot right now left-handed than i ever was right-handed that's saying a lot. That is saying a lot. Um, what do you, so, so do you, are you going to hunt left-handed? Oh, I already did. Yeah. I killed a 150 inch deer left-handed in November. Yeah. So I can I all cut it uh, in September right-handed. Yeah. I came home. I said, I'm making the switch and I switched in October. So I didn't hunt hardly any October. All I did was work on my game. Uh, November, the first week of November, I rattled up 150 inch deer and double lunged him. And the rest is, as they say, history. It's like, okay, if I can shoot a, a white tail, a good white tail under duress, um, with my knees knocking and, and I was able to concentrate on my process and get through the shot and make a great shot, then there's no reason not to now. Like I've already proven I could do it. Okay. And, and you shoot a lot of different bows. Oh yeah, yeah. I hop around. I, I'm, you know, it's like a race car driver, man. You you get you give a race car driver anything. Give him a go kart. He's gonna want to drive it, right? Yeah. So I think yeah. as 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 an archer, we, we ought to be able to pick up a bow and shoot it. I mean, it, I shoot a lot of different stuff. I shoot, you know, in I have a CD bow uh, riser. Um, I shoot it very well. I enjoy shooting it. Um, I have a brand new uh, St. Patrick's Lake longbow that I I bear hunted with. I yes, shoot man. it pretty well. I think uh, I think the mechanics are all the same, and I think if you can apply your mechanics to each 
platform that you shoot, then it's transferable. Your game is transferable up and down whatever equipment you have. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't found that. I found that I find that I jump around a lot of bows and I never <laughs> get good at any of them. So oh, you know, well, it's not, not my experience, but I, I'm glad that you're doing really well. No, you, I, I, I don't want to, I, I think that it's, I tend to gravitate to what season I'm in. Okay. So if it's indoor season, yeah. I'm probably going to shoot my CD and that's going to be it. And then when it's like getting ready for this bear hunt, I was obsessed. Uh, I want, I've never killed anything with an ASL. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to shoot a Boone and Crockett bear with an ASL. I didn't quite get it done, but it's okay. It was close. I got close. <laughs> and then um, as we get uh, like next uh, weekend, when we shoot the ASAs, I'm actually shooting a 25 inch wood riser off a flipper rest um, against all those guys because I'm shooting it very well. And that's eventually I have goals of, I want to make a, a world team, a world 3d team. Uh, and that's the kind of bow that I'd be shooting then. So I'm already thinking about that at least, you know, so that I can, I'm comfortable with the equipment. So yeah. What, is it, what category is that off of rest? Off of flip so off of in the trad category in the world archery, you yes. shoot off a stick on rest. Okay. So it's like a, you can do a bear with a rest or a Hoyt, uh, you know, super rest. And super rest. Um, you can't string walk, of course. You have to, um, you can face walk, though. That's a new thing for oh, really? So, really? yep. So that. you can start, you know, you can start right. with a yeah, low anchor. Yeah. And then if you're in close, you can come up to a higher anchor. And if you can complete the mechanics the right way, that's a biggie for a lot of guys. They, you know, they, you see, I've seen people try face walking and, their mechanics go to crap and then it's like, you know, you might as well have not done that and just shot your regular way. Just but, shot your gap. Yeah. Yeah. Just shot your gap. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I've been a gap shooter most of the time up until re in the last year or two, I started playing with more string walking uh, just because I enjoy the guys. I mean, the camaraderie that we have and in barebow and trad is pretty remarkable. And uh, I, you know, just uh, I like playing with all different bows, man. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, you said the camaraderie is pretty good in Barabo and Trad. Um, who don't you like? Like, who's the really bad people that you, we should avoid, like, at all costs? Is, <laughs> is it like, so like Dwayne Martin? Yeah, like, that guy, you know, that guy, every time I see him, and Dwayne's, Dwayne is, I love, well, let me rephrase that. I do love Dwayne, but I, I grew up in the South where we had these Baptist preachers and, and uh, where I grew up as a Southern Baptist church. And every time I talk to him, I, he reminds me of, well, I know you need to shoot the bow the right way. If you don't, bad things happen. You know, he has that diction that yeah. is just like, man, you want to give your soul. You know, it's like, all right. D Dwayne Martin is, I don't care what, it, he's younger than me, uh, but he's the father of all of us in Bear Bow. <laughs> he oh, just, yeah. just, and, and he does, he talks, he, his, he has a particular way of talking. It's just, it's iconic. He's iconic. Everything about him is iconic. So. Yes. And, um, and, you know, I still I stole this process like I went to that first Barebo boot camp. And uh, although I felt like I had a process, there's a lot of things in my shot that I, I emulate from Mr. Martin, you know, yeah. and I think that's the beauty of what we do with uh, with traditional bows. We can sample from from everybody. We, you can sample from Rod Jenkins. We can sample from Dwayne. I mean, I think the key is don't just try to emulate somebody completely. But, but it's just like martial arts for that matter. Um, you know, you're taking bits and pieces. It's called borrowing the master's bicycle. You're mm -hmm. training with the master and you're learning his way of doing things, but eventually you have to have your own bicycle. Mm -hmm. And we do that in traditional archery and, and barebow. We, we, we sample from other folks and then we build our game. Uh, but there's a lot of things in my shot process that I pick up from Dwayne just because he's so good at it. Hudson too, man. I mean, like, so, so speaking of, uh, um, Matt, um, he's a, he's got a great shot process too. Yes, he does. Very strong, <laughs> a very strong shot. So his, uh, his mechanics of how he, he draws the bow and how he shoots is, is pretty remarkable. And, uh, you know, the other thing about Matt, just like Jeff Ogilvy, he doesn't seem to get too high or too low. Yeah. I can look at that guy when we're shooting against each other on a course, and I can't tell you if he's four up or 15 down. You know, it just <laughs> has that that kind of all shucks mentality, like, you know, nothing's really bothering me. 
And then I, I forget which tournament. We were both having a pretty bad run at one of the ASAs. Like, we have both had not shot very well. And we were, you know, joking about, you know, things and, and uh, talk, you know, talking smack to each other, not knowing we both had shot like garbage, you know. <laughs> so, good dude. <laughs> very good dude. Yeah, it's good. It's good that you – again, this goes to, you know, your comment. There's good people in, the, in this sport, um, whether it's well, bare no. bow. It's almost – the bare bow in the traditional is – I feel like it's getting more separate or is that just me? I, I don't know. You know, I came from the traditional side of things and shot traditional and I go back and forth. Um, I don't know if it's separate so much as we all have certain things we want to accomplish, you know, from the competitive side, I would say, you know, because of, I think Lancaster uh, being such a big platform and other tournaments like Vegas, um, there's been more attention to bare bow. I don't mm -hmm. know if it's, a, if it's, there's this huge dichotomy between the two, um, cause there's enough transference between the two. Like I, I can go what's like IBO trad worlds you know, you can shoot bare bow in one class and, and shoot, you know, long bow in another, and then you can go and shoot a self bow if you'd like. So there's, there's enough, uh, across the seams, uh, uh, different, um, you know, disciplines, but, uh, for the most part, I, you know, look, there's a ton of great people in this, right. But no mistake, there's a few turds in the punch bowl too. I mean, there's a few guys out there that you just want to. You know, that's just part of the deal, you know, that's just yeah. Fine. yeah. But and, but for the most part, man, the both I mean, you've got just great people and they're involved in this for the same reasons that we are, because it's difficult and yeah. we like difficult things, obviously, you know. Yeah, it's 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 fun to learn, but it's it's hard to master. Yes, you know? very much. And, so. the, and I think that you know, you get to a certain point where you're you know, there's 80 or 90, 80, 90 percent of the people are in this category, and then I would consider you in that next top ten category, right? Well, and so that not, next top ten, it's so hard to get out of that ninety yeah. to get yeah. to that ten percent of the, the the population that can shoot that well. Again, I think it's you're right. I think it's a mental. I don't think we all know it's a ment. It's the difference between that ninety and that ten percent. It's probably more mental. I mean, I'd say so, but never us underestimate the amount of arrows at that top 10, 10 are shooting. I'm not saying that the 90%, you know, aren't shooting a lot of arrows, but you know, I, I know how obsessive I am with my, with my arrow count and how, you know, I have a plan. Uh, I, I, I have a plan written out and, and I try to stick to that plan. If I have something on the horizon that I want, mm -hmm. if I want to shoot well at a tournament, I'll already have an eight week, cycle of building arrow counts to get me there um and many times it's uh it's with that tournament in mind and then i start thinking about the positive you know trying to stay positive with everything and not allowing myself to think about anything but positive things and and um mm -hmm. you're right i mean mindset is such a big thing and i think um if we can segue to you know looking at how martial arts kind of fits into that I, I think that those things meld together pretty well. You know, you have a you have to have a mindset of being comfortable being uncomfortable, and That's when you're when you're struggling with some your shot, it's very uncomfortable. You know, it's tough to not be able to figure it out or to make the same mistake over. You know, it's it's a grind, man. It's a real grind. Yeah, it's like I personally, from my personal experience, I feel like sometimes I want to throw my my bow on the ground, but I don't know if you've, if you're familiar with, I'm sure you are Lenny Basham. Um, he was a, I don't know if you know that book uh, with, with uh, winning mind. Winning yep. mind. Yep. Yeah. And so, you know, he, I actually teach my kids one of those phrases, you know, that my kid in my martial arts class, you know, so when I teach my kids class, I go, all right, today, if you do something really good, like you do a good roll or you do uh, a good back break fall or you do something that's really good in class, I want you to say out loud, um, that's just like me. That's just <laughs> like me. And it's so good. And the kids and the parents, they really coalesce around it. And then they'll come back. The parents will come back the next day or the next week or whatever and say, hey, Sensei, you know, uh, they, they've been saying it's just like me every time. I come home from school, get an A, <laughs> just like me. That's just that's, like me. That's fantastic. And that, it, that's that's a great mindset thing. We teach uh, we teach Brazilian Jiu Jitsu to kids, and uh, 
some of the same things we have we have circle time so we'll have the word of the day and maybe it's like respect right we'll use that as our word and we'll talk about what it is to respect somebody right and yeah. and how you can show that you respect them maybe it's your you know doing the dishes for your parents or taking out the trash and things like that so it's good to have that that positive reinforcement i know um i read a book by larry wise recently uh, planning a peak in archery have you got it um i think i got that was a late so, no, no, it's mental mastery. Sorry, man. His his approach, um, I re that really helped me a lot when I was switching to left handed, because he make he wants you to write down five positive things, and he wants you to have those with you so that whenever you're at a tournament and it's in between ends or perhaps you're you have a bad end, you go over and you read those five positive things to keep you locked in so that you don't start down that rabbit hole of negativity. And, yeah. uh, you know, I found that to, to be very helpful because uh, I call it my cookie jar. I, I listen to or I follow a guy named David Goggins, who's a SEAL, and he's a motivational guy, and he's, you know, like a wild man. But he does all these ultra marathons. Um, great guy. But the book that he wrote um, is he talks about a cookie jar, having a, a cookie jar that when you are – up against it and you're just having a bad day, you can reach into your cookie jar and pull out a positive thought and nice. say, you know what, I'm, I'm a pretty decent cook, you know, or, <laughs> you know, you know what, my wife's beautiful, you know, uh, it, things like that, that just, that I think when we are, um, when we're shooting, we tend to say, we tend to beat ourselves up, like, right, we make a bad shot, boom, it's like, oh, I should have done that, or why did you do that? Uh, or you talk negative to yourself. Um, and I think the difference in some people is the ability to just flush that, just flush it. It's yeah. over and yes. on to the next, you know? Yes. Yeah. If you, if you talk negative to yourself, you will listen. Go you will for listen. sure. Yeah. You will listen. And that, and that's, who is, who is it? Was it, it was something like Ford or something that said, whether you think you're right or wrong, you're right. That's right. That's, that's yeah. right. You know, yeah. and it's, and it's, it's so many uh it's exactly what you're saying i think these are these positive thoughts are, are, are amazing i we both we have a um a friend in common josh miller yeah um and i don't josh told me not to share this he didn't tell anyone but i'm gonna tell the world so i don't care all right josh, do don't, tell me, don't tell me stuff um <laughs> but he's, he used to, i don't think he'll mind now he used to put he put sticky notes up everywhere yeah and then he would he would look at it and go okay well you know there's this and this and then he rate I think he wrote something inspirational on his bow too. So, uh, you know, it's so important to have that good mental mind. And like you said, be able to flush the bad stuff. That's the I tough can't, part. I, I can't do that. I personally yeah. can't do that. I don't know how you train to do that. I don't. I, I think you, I think you just have to positively reinforce for every negative thought, have two positive thoughts. Um, mm -hmm. There's, there's plenty of times in jujitsu being an older athlete where I'm rolling with a young, tough blue belt, you know, who's might have wrestled in high school and he gets me, he, he catches me and it's like he caught me. And the old me back, you know, uh, my hyper competitive 20s when I was a college athlete, I might or even in Muay Thai when I was really hyper competitive, then it would it would really get to me. It would it would bother me. Now it's like, OK, you either win or you learn and you get you get caught, you tapped. You don't get yes. your arm snapped and you get to play again. And yeah. so when you're shooting your bow and, and you make a bad shot, it's not the end of the day. Your, your, your wife still loves you. Your dog still likes you. You, you know, for the most part, your friends are okay. You know, you can, so, <laughs> and I think it's important to kind of be able to detach from that. I know Jocko Willick is another guy that I've read lots of his leadership stuff and he talks about detachment as a tool. Um, it's also, you know, you know, it's, it's used universally as a way just to psychoanalyze the situation and sometimes being able to detach from a bad situation and being able to look at it. So if you make a really crappy shot, I missed a, I forget, I missed a target at, at something at a, at an, um, it was an ASA and, uh, I was shooting really, really well. And then just blanked one, like out of the blue, don't know what happened. I think I had the wrong crawl cause I was shooting bare bow. And uh, I just started laughing and it was just hysterical because it's like, you know, that's, you know, like what you said, 
that's just like me. That's like something I would do, you know, like <laughs> have a have an even round going and then and then blank one, you know. And it wasn't two targets later. Spanky looks at me and said, "I blanked one too." And I'm like, "Good, <laughs> good. I'm glad, Spanky. Now I don't feel so dumb." <laughs> way, way, way to commiserate on the negative. That's um, right. That's right. Speaking of Spanky, um, I think we're going to be putting together. I think hopefully they're, they're putting together something for his daughter and, and yeah. His, son-in-law yeah. um so if you're listening to this and you you know spanky go and and, and uh I, I don't know if there'll be something up or not but i think there might be a gofundme they got into a bad yes. accident i want to mention that um kansas guy you know it's just uh, it's it's a terrible thing spanky my heart and prayers go out to you we love you um right, you're, right, you're right, right, buddy. yeah we love you okay so what <laughs> if i had to put you on a desert island uh you only get one bow yeah what are you what are you taking with you Ooh. I would probably take, hmm, I have a 19 inch um, Rossing recurve that's purple because I'm a purple belt and yeah. it looks so badass and it's got like a purple quiver and it shoots a 340, uh, 600 grain arrow with, uh, with extreme malice inside of like 25 yards. Yeah. Put me on an island with a half dozen arrows and a good skin and knife where there's some pigs or something, and we're in business. Yeah. Is that um, that one that has the grooves in it? No, that, that's the 25 inch riser that he built. Okay. It does have the, I would call them scales. It does have those mm -hmm. scales, but it's, it's a, um, it's not as, um, the finish is a little duller because I wanted it for hunting. That's what I, that's what I shot my buck with last year. And, uh, it's kind of a, a go-to for me. It feels grip-wise um, much like my honey or my uh, target one that he built me. Mm -hmm. So it, the grip's the same, and uh, it, I shoot it really well. And you know what's funny about ILF? I was such a an ILF like I'm never going to own an ILF bow like five six years ago, yeah. and then I got one and realized, oh wait a minute, I can change out the limbs, I can change the tiller. There's you know it's so it, it's so versatile that it just now it's like. I toted, um, I had, a, I went moose hunting with my CD 21 mm -hmm. and, um, it was fairly heavy for like a hunting bow to be walking 15 miles a day. But I was so obsessed with that, how it performed, you know, that, um, that ILF setup that it was, it was my go-to on my moose hunt the whole time I was there. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I mean, that's probably it, you know, that's a, that's, that uh although my my uh, st patrick's lake bow that i'm shooting that I, um and I, I don't can it like joshua uh is a great bow shot he's got that beautiful cant uh, yeah. it looks so pretty when he lets go of it if yeah. i tried to cant and then go back to an upright position i would be a complete basket case so <laughs> i shoot it upright and i and i shoot it in a blasphemous way i shoot it with some some carbon arrows yeah. Uh, but I guarantee you it's sending the arrow down range is going to get the job done. So <laughs> it's so true. What did I see, I saw Matt Zernzak string walk in his ASL the other day. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> you know what? The biggest, the biggest whitetail, this is, this is going back to 2019. So we had been to the bare bow boot camp. I think by then, I think, no, it wasn't that. I had shot in the uh, Trad Worlds and I made a podium and I met Dwayne for the first time. And Dwayne had done this um, tutorial on YouTube, an old one, where he yeah. was using a fixed crawl. And I was having trouble with really close shots. I would rattle up these giant deer and then they would come running in at like eight to 10 yards. And I would, I would, you know, it, it was a tough shot for me. So I watched his video. And the very next year, I rattled up 180 inch deer and shot it with a fixed crawl off the shelf with a with a with a longbow, a three piece longbow, and it worked beautifully. I couldn't wait to see him. When I saw him again, I'm like, dude, I I owe you some back straps, or you know, I know you don't drink, but I would buy you a cocktail if if uh, you know, because that tip put a big deer on the wall for me. Yeah, he's that yeah, was good. I mean, you're you're making you know you're 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 in that caliber, that league now, you know, so I expect you to be on the podium this year at Lancaster. I'm going to um, try, man. I'm, I'm, uh, I love to compete. I love, I love to compete on Fridays, rolling with my guys and my, my buddies that were trying to, uh, strangle each other. Um, I, I, uh, I, I pull for them when we're rolling, you know, if, if they tap me, I'm happy for them. Yeah. Uh, the same thing happens with Jeff when we're shooting indoors and he kicks my butt again. 
I say, um, you know, good job. And but I I, I want to be able to uh, compete and go to that next level. I got to make the cut the year before last, and I didn't shoot very well. But I got to shoot against Dimmer right out of the gate, which was like, you know, uh, I tried to get him to shoot the wrong target. Even I said, hey, we're shoot. You shoot top this time, and he like looked at me and went, no, no. <laughs> but yeah. I want to do I want to do more of that. I like to compete. I mean, the, the real problem is time management, you know, having so many things that I'm interested in and and being a martial artist and a dad and, you know, healthcare provider and all those things kind yeah. of rolled in. It, it's it's tough because you, mindset is one thing, but you still have to put arrows down range. And when you're getting ready for a big tournament, you're, you should be putting down a couple of hundred arrows a day, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. what I think anyway. No, no, it's good. Um, you know, I've got to get to some other questions here real quick, yep. though. I have a format I got to stick to, Michael. Yeah, let her rip, man. Let her yeah, rip. I'm teasing. This is better. This is better than all that. Um, so, okay, we talked about a bow that you like because you, you're shooting a bunch. Um, I guess, and honestly, you, you've already given some really fantastic advice, but I would like, how about some specific advice for someone who's new to archery or new to – I don't know. You pick okay. hunting, hunting or target shooting, either one. I, think, I don't think they're mutually exclusive. I think okay. I think they're one and the same. It, so the chance. first thing I would say is don't be overbowed. If you're new to traditional archery, so many folks think they can jump right in and shoot 60 pound. They need to be shooting a 60 pound recurve. That is absolutely false. A 45 pound bow will kill anything in North America. So keep that in mind. Um, the other thing is trying to learn how to shoot a bow properly just learning it on your own is it doesn't work you end up making so many mistakes that you have to go back and relearn so specifically i would say get some instruction actually you know get you know, with with the online formats now man you can get some really good instruction for not very much money that'll that'll jump really the learning curve gets sped up you know um and the other thing is is remember we're having fun with this this is this is supposed to be fun and it, the more we make it work, the more it just becomes a job and something that you don't want to do, you know. And I think that you, if you're if you're new, um, start out by picking the brain to somebody who really knows something, and keep it simple. You know, Rod Jenkins talks about that a lot. Keeping it simple, don't overcomplicate it. You know, if you can borrow from Bull Durham, you know, when he's talking about baseball, and he's just like. Uh, you know, it's, it, it, catch the ball, catch the ball. Yeah. yeah. I mean, keep it simple. You know, I asked for the curveball. Here's the curveball. You know, that just try to do things that are um, relatively simple so that when you go to build a shot, it's a simple step process. And and then you can start to, to work on the smaller things. But yeah. yeah, hope that answered that question. No, no, that's really good. And um, it's, it's a good time to kind of mention, you know, I, I, I get, um, I have a sponsor for our channel is, is um, the push archery. And I will say, you know, since you brought it up, I'll say, you know, if you go over to the push, the, their learning center, um, they have some great stuff there. They oh, have yeah. shot IQ. They have Rod Jenkins, as you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, they have JD three uh, teaching bear bow. There's a lot of stuff that, so in, in you're right. It's, it's inexpensive head on over there and, and see those guys uh, support the tribe community. And uh, they help to support us. They, uh, support the single string boot camp. They do a ton of stuff. So they're good people. Right. Um, okay. So that's your, that's your bit of advice. If, if people want to get to you and say, Hey, Michael, how you doing? Can I, ha can I talk to you? Like get, get some advice from you directly. Do you mind if they reach out to you? And if they do, where would, where would they reach out? Yeah. So I'm on Instagram. It's a uh, YPT Mike. Uh, and uh, you'll be able to find me there. That's, that's the main place I hang out or uh, you know, uh, I, I don't really do forums much anymore. I just kind of jump on uh, Insta Shizzle and check out, you know, and see what Archery Geek's doing and what you, what, what other folks are doing. Uh, and unfortunately, on my feed, there's nothing but jujitsu, hunting, cooking. That's about it, and my family. So I'm not real exciting. But um, you know, it's uh, you can find me on Instagram. I I like that that platform. I can see all my archery buddies and all my jujitsu buddies in one place. So come find me. Yeah. Okay. And then. Uh, before we go, how soon before we uh, see you test for for black? Man, you know, it's a while. So Hoist Gracie is my master. 
that's who gives me my belts. And uh, I train under one of his black belts, uh, Jared Jessup. And we have, they have a very long, it's a long apprenticeship. So I've been at it eight and a half years. I'm purple belt. I should be a brown belt in a year or two. And then it's just a matter of am I, uh, when I roll with Hoist and when I do things with Hoist, am I being, a, am I a black belt yet? And there's a, there's a whole different platform that goes with that. I mean, it's a, it's a lot of involved stuff to make black belt for Hoist. So I'm looking forward to that challenge. I want to do it before I'm too old to actually, you know, be a black belt and be an effective black belt, you know? So um, it may be a couple of three years before I'm there, but can't wait. I'm sure you're a great instructor too, like in your own right. And uh, so t give us your school school's name again so we can promote them. Anyone listening to Jiu Jitsu uh, that might be interested in Jiu Jitsu for them or their kid? Yeah, it's IQ Jiu Jitsu. It's uh, located in uh, Benton, Illinois. And we have a new affiliate that's starting in Raleigh, North Carolina. Nice. And I think I'll have my own affiliate somewhere in Murray, Kentucky in the next year. I'm partnering with another purple belt. And uh, we're going to focus on self-defense jiu-jitsu, mainly, uh, you know, the way uh, Gracie jiu-jitsu was taught from the beginning with Hoist. So we're, we're looking to do that sometime in the next year. And uh, that'll be, I hope, becomes, I can do that for a living uh, more as time goes on, as I get a little older. That, I, that is something I'm really passionate about. And self-defense for children, especially women and children, is really, after growing up in a really rough neighborhood and, and all those things that, that went on in my own childhood, I want to make sure those kids know how to defend themselves. So that's a, that's, that's a big passion project for me. Can I just say something that might be controversial for anyone that's listening and does martial arts and does Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I will say your master in the way that you guys learn Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is the way to learn Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, the humility, the family um, values that are in the Gracie system are next to none. So I thank you so much better. I, I I'll, I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it at that. And, <laughs> and I want to thank a whole different for, can of worms, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So thank you very, very much for being on the show, Michael. Really appreciate you. Um, I can't say enough great things about you. It's been awesome. Thank and you, uh, I want to thank our sponsors. Thank all our patrons. If you're not a patron, go to uh, uh, patreon.com archery geek. It's two bucks a day. Go get it or two bucks a month. Um, go get it done. It helps with the channel. Um, I love it. Thanks again. Appreciate it. Study martial arts, study uh, archery, get a coach. Um, Michael's going to tell you, and if you run into him, he'll roll with you. So That's just, absolutely. Just Anytime. Anytime. Just <laughs> <laughs> Ain't going to be me, brother. Ain't going to be right, me. Man. Hunt the good stuff. Take it easy. All right. See ya. See ya.